Hi, my name is Ruben Malamol, and I am a PhD researcher both at the Molecular Design and Synthesis Lab at KI Leuven, as well as the Quantum Chemistry Group at VU Brussels. My academic career started about two years ago at Chemistry European Journal with my very first publication. And the research we describe in this work concerns a subject which I'm still very passionate about. You see, during my education, I was always intrigued by how chemical reactions took place. I really wanted to see the transformation going from a reactant phase to a product phase through a transition state, which I later learned was considered one of the eight holy grails in chemistry. And during an internship, I got acquainted with a technique called metadynamics. Now the goal of metadynamics is to virtually simulate chemical transformations. And if you want to simulate a chemical reaction where bonds are being formed and broken, you need a quantum theory to drive the simulation. And usually, density functional theory is a method of choice. The reason why we can't use normal apenecio molecular dynamics for these types of simulations is because the systems that we are interested in need to cross energy barriers. And if we would just leave the system on its own, it would take far too long and take up too much computational resources before it would ever cross this barrier. That's why with metadynamics, you place a number of Gaussian potentials, which literally push the system over this barrier. In our research, we use metadynamics to study a well-known chemical reaction, namely the electrophilic aromatic substitution. Generally, we teach undergraduate students that this reaction occurs in two separate steps. However, recently researchers have questioned the validity of this reaction pathway, as it was virtually impossible to observe the transition state of this reaction through experiments, as well as through computations. Instead, Schleier and co-workers postulated an alternative concerted mechanism based on static DFT calculations. Through our simulations, we were able to further elucidate the mechanism of the electrophilic aromatic chlorination of benzene. Our results suggest that the solvent in which the reaction takes place has a large effect on the mechanism of choice. If you do the reaction in a weak interacting environment, such as for example carbon tetrachloride, indeed a concerted mechanism is preferred, as was suggested by Schleyer and co-workers. However, if you do the reaction in a stronger interacting environment, such as acetonitrile or acetic acid, electrostatic stabilization and specific hydrogen bonds can kick in, which stabilize the lifetime of a charged intermediate, and hence also the preference towards the classic mechanism. We hope you are as enthusiastic about this research and metadynamics in general as we are, and if you want more details, you can always read the full article using the link below at Chemistry a European Journal.